There are only a few anime that, even months after watching, I'll still find myself thinking about non-stop. Spirited Away was one of them. Your Line April was one of them. I Want to Eat Your Pancreas was one of them. A Silent Voice was one of them. And for the longest time, I didn't understand why My Dress Up Darling was one of them. When I figured it out, I stopped everything and started making this video. My Dress Up Darling is a rom-com anime that follows two characters, the protagonist, Wakano Gojo, and by far the most notable character of the series, Maureen Kitagawa. The two of them fatefully cross paths, and Gojo, a Hina doll enjoyer, begins to help Maureen with her passion for cosplay. The two of them grow closer and learn more about each other's interests, and an endearing, though often a bit frustrating, romance begins to bloom. To be completely honest, I started watching this series because I thought it'd be a train wreck. Frankly, Maureen was the waifu of the month character, and I figured I'd make a funny video or two about the next generic, uninspired seasonal trash. I ended up making two fairly popular videos on Dress Up Darling, both of which got copyright striked and got my channel demonetized, which it still is to this day. All this to say, I have more reasons than most to not care for this show at all. But this anime is more than your run-of-the-mill harem garbage, and it has much more depth than you think. That being said, there's a couple things that need to be addressed. The series contains fan service. In fact, the series is largely known for the fan service. Many people take issue with this, with how the cast is all underage. Personally, I found some of the fan service to be a bit off-putting, to say the least. At the same time, I recognize that this media comes from a different culture entirely and is largely targeted for a teenage audience. Regardless of what your opinion on the issue is, I do think that the show is actually held back by its need to be fanservice-y, and has a lot more to say than just Marin Kitagawa has really large Writer George R. R. Martin once famously said, the only thing worth writing about is the human heart in conflict with itself. This was likely said while not writing The Winds of Winter. What I believe makes Dress Up Darling such a compelling story is how it explores the ideas of gender insecurity and identity through the characters Gojo and Marion. In the first scene of the series, we're introduced to Gojo, a young man infatuated with Hina dolls, a common feminine symbol in Japan. While this is initially the only piece of information we're given about him, it contextualizes so much of his character. Because of his interest not conforming to traditional masculine stereotypes, he's told that he's abnormal and is alienated by others, with his peers in turn taking advantage of him viewing him as weak. The anime realistically showcases the detrimental effects that this has on someone who's still forming their identity. Gojo's struggle with insecurity shapes who he is as a character, and defines his character arc throughout the series. We follow his journey as he learns to embrace his interests and understand his identity, becoming someone who can be confident and proud in himself and his work. In this way, My Dress Up Darling is one of the few anime where the protagonist's central conflict is their disassociation with gender normative interests and can be examined as an interesting character study in this way. Protagonists in other anime tend to either be a generic self-insert, someone as equally flawless as they are dull, or so utterly repugnant that we find ourselves actively rooting against them. So when I see so many people calling Gojo a boring main character, I begin to doubt that they were paying him the same attention as they were with Mari. Gojo is a character we can root for not only as a young man learning to gain confidence in himself and his identity, but also as someone who doesn't allow for societal pressures to determine what he is passionate about. His character arc for me was the highlight of the show, and captures some of the most important themes that we should take away from it. Marin, though seemingly the exact opposite kind of person as Gojo, faces a similar identity crisis as him. Outgoing and energetic, people's perception of her is based almost entirely off her outward appearance and gender assumptions. As a result, she is unable to freely express her own interests due to them not conforming with traditional feminine norms. Once again, she struggles internally with reconciling her own interests with the narrowly defined box that others have placed her in. The way the show explores this character dichotomy is interesting, as we're positioned in such a way where we initially conclude that these two main characters couldn't be any more different, as we expect to see in most other shows of the same genre. Yet as we learn more about these two, we see that they're just two sides of the same coin, desperately searching for their sense of belonging. It's poetic in a way that Dress Up Darling, a show about the importance of not making judgments on people based on their outward appearance or interests, has a certain reputation based almost entirely on the way it appears instead of the content as a whole. 
One of the most common questions raised about the anime was why Marion fell in love with someone like Gojo in the first place. After all, Marion is beautiful, popular, and extroverted while Gojo is seemingly plain, outcasted, and severely introverted. Cynics often say that Marin's attraction to Gojo is yet another example of anime appealing to male fantasy. While it's undeniable that this is very prevalent in modern day anime, with an entire genre essentially existing just for that purpose, I argue that the romance presented in Dress Up Darling is not only plausible, but sensible, and aligns with the themes of the show perfectly. Maureen, someone who, despite constantly being in others' company, never had a real sense of belonging, but was finally able to connect with someone who faced the same issues with judgments and identity, and slowly was able to overcome them. In an anime with a central theme of not judging others on their appearance, it's only fitting that Marion sees past the image that others have put onto Gojo, and sees the kind of person that Gojo really is. The development of their genuine relationship was really quite endearing, despite the reputation that it has. Calling such a thing unrealistic, again, seems to fly in the face of the central message of the show. Dress Up Darling's message is quite simple at face value, but it communicates it in a unique and effective way. Sure, the... how do you put it? less subtle aspects of the show are just that, but if you don't let yourself get distracted by them, there's a compelling narrative to follow. Plus, I mean, who really says you can only have one or the other? Like I touched on earlier, where most people got into the anime strictly because of the copious amounts of fan service, I strongly believe that the fan service somewhat holds the show back from reaching its potential. We lose quite a lot of screen time throughout the show to the fan service segments, and I think the show had a lot more to say that could have been conveyed to the viewer if it weren't for them. I also really, really didn't care for the harem thing that the show was going for. I think the central conflict of the show being the struggle with insecurity and identity was compelling, and could have taken up the entire season with still plenty more to go on about. I mentioned earlier that My Dress Up Darling was occupying the same rent-free space in my head that other anime that I consider masterpieces have, and dare I say, I was able to figure out the reasons why. So, among the anime I mentioned earlier like Spirited Away, Your Line April, A Silent Voice, and I Wanna Eat Your Pancreas, is My Dress Up Darling a masterpiece? No. And frankly, there's quite a lot of distance to be made in that regard. We'll see how far they can make it in future seasons. But it's a narratively compelling show that says a lot about identity, gender insecurities, and staying true to oneself. And to dismiss it strictly based on its reputation is the kind of behavior that the show itself fights back against. I hope you've enjoyed this video essay on My Dress Up Darling. It's been quite a while since I've made a more professional, high effort video like this, so I hope that this can be the start of a return to form for my channel. If you want to see more analyses like this one, be sure to check out my character study on Tsubaki from Your Line April, or my defense of Sayaka from Danganronpa. Hopefully it's evident that I've made lots of progress in terms of quality since then. Also, I mentioned earlier that the channel is currently demonetized, and yes, this is still the case. I currently have been unable to make a single penny for months now from my channel's videos. Uh, and, well, frankly speaking, it was because some bullshit AI algorithm decided that I don't get to make any money anymore. Not that I do these videos just to make money, but it is kind of difficult to justify to myself spending this much time on a project when I'm not really getting any direct Thing back from it. So if you'd like to support me in, in my creative endeavors, I have recently opened up a Patreon, even though this is a sentence I'd hope I'd never have to say, but the situation has arisen where it is necessary. It's still very much in its early days, but as I develop more and more, uh, you'll be seeing a lot more juicy incentives. And just in general, it's just a nice way to support me as I try to finally, finally do more videos like these. So feel free to stop by if you are so inclined to support me and these videos, but either way. Do note that this is one of four scripts that I've finalized for video essays, one being on Spirited Away, one on Howl's Moving Castle, and one on the character Sakura from Danganronpa. Be sure to subscribe and leave a comment if you'd like to see more essays like this. It, having direct feedback would give me all the motivation I'll need to really get to grinding. So keep your eyes open and stay safe. Anyway, $4 a pound. <laughs>